Welcome everyone to my fourth fireside chat. Um, it is April 7th, I believe, and the moon is full tonight. So tonight's uh, video takes on a special purpose of being a full moon as bat spell working. Well, maybe not the full ritual uh, spell working. Hey Jenny, I'm so glad you're joining me. Welcome to Esbat. So tonight the moon is full uh, in Libra, which is directly opposite of the sun in Aries. And so I was thinking about what sort of impromptu backyard bootstrap spell work I could do tonight because the question that I had um, was going to endeavor to answer was about, hi Bethany, glad you joined me too. Happy as bad. So the, the, what I was planning to do tonight was to answer the uh, question posed to me by a new, um, a new friend, a new watch, someone who was watching the other day, um, who asked me about, um, I guess creating one's magical stash. She, um, she said, do I need to, to just buy ingredients for spells as I'm wanting to do them? You know, like get a spell in a book and then go to the store and get what you need, or should I be developing a stash of um, many different kinds of things just in the house? And I said, that's a great question because this room, of course, is full of my stash, but I've been at this for a long time. Generally speaking, I'd say people do begin with um, buying specific things for specific workings to get their feet wet, and then you have a little extra usually, and so as you continue going, you don't need as much. Hi, Melissa. So in this Esbat, I was thinking about how the moon, well, there's a bit of lunar work for you. The moon is always directly opposite the sun when it is full. That's just how things work. If it's the sun is on one side of the zodiac in the sky, and it's in Aries right now, that's a fire sign. The earth is in the middle. And then on the opposite side is the moon. And they hang in a balance, like Papa Sun and Mama Moon are holding baby earth in the middle. And we're caught in the cradle between the two, which brings a form of beautiful balance. And in this case, the balance is between Aries, which is a fire sign, and Libra, which is an air sign. The things about this that are so ironic is that when the moon is in Libra, we tend to strive for socialness. We want to get out and be around people. Um, it's very much about wanting to communicate and create interconnection and, and get out and go to a party or something like that. Fire signs, Aries is also very get out and go and do it and, and make it happen and powerful. It's very much about spring and invigoration and wanting to strike out into the world and make new things and and here we are all being told to stay home and don't go out and see people and don't interact so it's a trying time I know I personally have been riddled with anxiety um, very low um, kind of want to hide out a little bit in my nest here and I am um, so I was thinking what sort of spell work I could do for myself to on this full moon night to, um, to help to, I don't know, to help me bring, bring me back into balance with my fires, which helps me to get out of a more depressed state of mind. Um, I'm a Pisces. I'm all water uh, when it comes to the, uh, my sun sign. And so I tend to drown in my own puddles, if you know what I mean. And with all this concern, in the world right now. Hi DJ! With all the concern in the world right now, um, my puddle is deep and I drown in it occasionally. Um, also, just the anxiety of the full moon has uh, really been getting me, but it has, certainly hasn't been motivating the way the fiery Aries needs to be. Hey Jenna! So, I, uh, I, I've been thinking about what I could do to um, to create a little spell work as an example of what one might do just by themselves on a full moon. But I'm also going to demonstrate more of the um, ritual techniques um, that would go with a typical Esbat. Hardly the full dog and pony show when you've got everyone together. But we've been, um, at the beginning of each of these videos, I've been um, demonstrating how I consecrate my 
my elemental consecration tool and tonight we arrive at the salt of earth um, I thought I'd speak a little bit about stones but then to answer um, the question of the evening of do I need to just get things individually or do I just collect things I thought I would make this a backyard bootstrap spell work kind of thing and talk about the sorts of things that one might just have in their kitchen cupboards and one might just have in the backyard so I actually went around looking in the kitchen in the backyard and, and my spice cabinet to show you that even if you're just beginning witchcraft I promise you you are well if you do any cooking at all you have um, you probably already have right at your fingertips everything you need to get started hi Jennifer if I miss anybody I apologize sometimes I get talking oh yeah we've got some Pisces in the house okay so without further ado to me what makes an as bad calling in the elements, honoring the goddess and the God as part of nature and also within me in a prayerful way, some sort of working. I'd like to read the charge of the goddess because it's my favorite poem and it is a thing traditionally done at the full moon and it reminds me of what my mission as a witch is supposed to be and then the simple feast to nourish the soul. So the special working tonight is going to be a poppet. A poppet for Aries, Sun, and Libra, Moon. Okay, but without further ado, to begin, and as we already have previously, on my altar, I've already awakened and called fire and water. I got my charcoal tab burning, but it's just finished, and now I'm going to add a little bit of air incense. This air incense blend I light in honor of the Libra moon tonight, so I'm going to put some incense on first. With my wee spoon. Welcome powers of air. with the salt bowl same as I've done hello Alan so far as I've done with everyone else um, all my other consecration tools you first have to connect to elemental earth this is going to be good it's what they call grounding and I'm gonna be doing a lot of earthy things here tonight despite the fact that all the Sun fire and moon and air anyway so I'm gonna to connect to the powers of earth as that hello sister my sister is here that makes it a special night all right I connect to the powers of earth and for me I always remember myself as a tree so much of my practice is centered in the visualization of a tree and so and so I think about myself as a tree and my roots deep down in the earth and my branches high up in the air but I form the middle world because to me the earthiness is the middle world and I remember my connections deep in the earth and the cool stone like the stone um, foundations of the world I always imagine that as a green light because green associates to earth for me and so I, I connect to that energy and I awaken the salt and then with my athame because I love me some pen, uh, pentagrams I will do an invoking pentagram or a banishing pentagram um, for so many things and the the keystone pentagram of all of them is the earth one so I'm gonna do an invocation of elemental earth by drawing that pentagram in the salt and I'm gonna do it three times sprinkle about some to give us some grounded energy this night Whew. other things that I like to keep with my um, salt bowl well you may have noticed I have a, a pattern for each of them made by a friend of mine um, little this they've got a quarter call on the back my high priest when I was 
an elected priestess of the coven, priest named Phoenix at the time, and um, he made those for me. I also have this wee stone that my children gave me with an image of a heron painted on it. Hi, Georgette. So I always keep that together with it. Other stone friends on my altar, and mind you, my, my stones are my friends. I consider them beings of earth. This is a prize. This is a lithium quartz, which is naturally citrinated. This is how citrine, when it forms naturally in the earth, looks. To me, it's very much um, a masculine stone. There's little rainbows in it when you turn it just so because of the lithium. Um, it is a va very powerful and beautiful stone to me, and I keep it on my altar as a reminder of masculine energies and masculine divinity. This is a tourmaline, polished at the top, raw on the sides. As much as it looks like a black tourmaline, it's actually a blue tourmaline, which is pretty rare. This was a gift to me by an old friend. Unless it, we can sun, shine the sun through it, it's almost impossible to show it as blue. But to me, this is the night forces and the goddess um, as much as anything. It's very grounding and protecting to me. Uh, very much an emotional protector, too, for me. So that's my blue tourmaline. And then my other favorite stone friend, which we're going to be using a lot, a lot tonight, hello Heather, is my um, naturally occurring hematite. I got this from a mine in Canada. It was amusing to me because it's got this funny shape to it that just reminds me of a bosom. But, um, or a big mustache. But this hematite has is very high in iron. Well, all hematite is high in iron. Iron is um, associated with Mars. So for its healing, I mean, for its protective, grounding, encouraging kind of energies, I use this hematite a lot. So that is all of our elements. I had previously awakened and welcomed the others. But just as a quick opening invocation prayer, because this is an esbat, and if I'm not in the company of other people and there's not roles, you know, and, and speaking parts passed around, I just do myself a prayer. And so I open this esbat. On this full moon night, when the sun is in Aries and the moon is in Libra, I call upon the powers of the great God and the great goddess to be present with me and us through this video on this night of high tide of the moon. I welcome the powers of air to be present, called through the moon in Libra to bring balance to the mental body in this unique time of crisis and isolation. May we know balance in our thoughts. I call the powers of fire to be present, bring balance and Mm, the fires of passion and courage and bravery to face anything that we're facing during this difficult time and to do it with strength and honor and integrity. And I call to be present in this working, the powers of water. The powers of water soothe our souls and our emotional bodies. Bring us, bring us your deep vision, your deep awareness of our interconnections despite our physical isolation and powers of earth I call you to be present in this working and in this evening to ground us and help us to find our roots to find our happiness in the stability and safety in the four walls of our homes be with us hail and welcome and also I call upon <laughs> the great God and goddess, the two who move as one to remind us of our interconnections and our divinity so that as we make our choices in these coming days that we are reminded of our larger responsibility to the larger body of spirit and the larger body of nature. Be with us. Hail and welcome. Okay. I don't usually cast a full circle walking about when I do an esbat, but I do remind myself that I am connected above and below. 
I remember my branches high above, touching atmosphere and the sun and the God. I remember my roots down below, remembering the water table and the earth beneath me. I see my body as the middle world. And then I channel all of that up. And I just see how that energy flows to the edge of my auric space. And I push that out a bit to encompass my working space. And in this sacred space of my own making, may all that I do here for tonight be for the highest good of all involved, harming none. May it bring peace and balance to body, soul, mind, will, and spirit. Blessed be. All right, I'm going to move these things to the side so we can get to the magic. Welcome everybody. The fun thing we're going to do tonight is to make a poppet. Uh -huh. I've already begun. What I um, what I've done here. See, I have a template that I made out of cardboard. A little person. Hi, Kayla. And I keep I keep felt on hand. If you've got any scrap material, it doesn't matter what it is. You can cut um, a little person shape. This poppet's going to represent me. Um, when I use make poppets, I don't, unless I have explicit permission from um, the person that it's meant to represent and their participation in the spell work, I don't, I don't ever make poppets for other people. So it was going to represent me and how my, I've got my fiery side, sun and Aries, and I've got my, um, my mental side with my moon in Libra. You'll note that I've stitched around the edge and it doesn't have to be fancy with some black embroidery thread because during this time I'd like to create a boundary of protection for myself. So this color, happy full moon Kayla. So this color magic goes along with elements and planetary forces but also just good old-fashioned common sense. Uh, black is absor it, it absorbs all the colors and it doesn't let anything go, so it's very protective. And I'd like to see that as a, a boundary at my edges, that, you know, good solid boundaries, my immune system um, strengthened and protected, but also perhaps my, uh, just my, my sense of safety, my sense of security. So that's why I've used black. Note that I've gone all the way around, except for this part, the crotch of the situation which basically makes this a bag at this point. So when I do poppet magic, it's really not that different for me than, hi Chris, it's really not that different for me than if I did a mojo hand or a spell box or a spell bag. It's basically me creating a collection of plant, mineral, animal, metal, um, allies, various things that correspond with the powers at hand that would, um, that would bolster my work. Hi, Allison. Okay, so I've left it open so I can then load it. Now, what am I gonna put in there? Well, when I do any of this sort of magical work, um, I like to have nine ingredients. Now, we've already talked about this. Nine is the lunar number. It's, um, it's three times three. It's fairy goddess love me the number nine so most of my spell work will have nine ingredients all right so but things that you can just find around the house so my recommendation isn't necessarily that you need to keep a witchy stash and just for fun because we're in my magic room we'll show you the other side of the room the messy side that right there is where i do a lot of my planning of my book but check up there all my jars over there, I've got all sorts of things on the shelves. That's where I keep a lot of my magical stash. Hey, Lisa. But you don't have to have stuff from a magical store. 
So here's some things that I found. Okay, so just if we wanted to talk about the elements by themselves. Fire, easy peasy. For one thing, hi Kimberly. So these are my, I pulled my stuff, instead of pulling from my magical stuff up there, I pulled from my pantry, my refrigerator, and my cupboards for my cooking spices. So basil from the grocery store. Basil's also pretty easy to grow. Basil is associated with fire. Isn't that interesting? Also, clove, just clove powder that, you, that we sell. We sell it like this, but you know, clove powder, cinnamon powder. Um, this I, it was from my magical stash. I called it my fiery sun blend. It had cinnamon, ginger, allspice, clove, and nutmeg, and it was marketed for food as pumpkin pie spice. Pumpkin spice is basically magical powder for the fire and for fire element and sun planet. Very easy, delicious, great in everything. Um, other things that um, are good for fire would be dill. Need an emergency something with dill? Got any pickles? I don't know. Um, ginger, nutmeg, like we said, orange. Oranges are great. You can peel a little of this rind off, get a little of the zest. It doesn't even have to be dry necessarily. You need to do something with fire uh, and the sun. Orange. A lot of uh, interesting magic comes from using fruit like that. Garlic is another one. Also defends against vampires, I hear. Rosemary. Here's a little sprig of rosemary. It's dry now. Uh, rosemary is awesome for fire. Remember, keep rosemary by the garden gate. It'll protect the house. Air, things that are associated with air. Clover, easy to go in the backyard and pluck some clover. Lavender flower, lavender's in everything. Lemongrass, delicious in Thai food. Let's see, I think I even have my lemongrass in here. No, nope, I guess not. Um, mint, anything mint, uh, easy to grow. If you happen to have a mint tea bag and need a little extra mint um, leaf to dress a candle or something, you break open a tea bag. Um, sage, culinary sage, good for air. Also mistletoe, it grows in all the trees around here. Um, star anise, and um, oh, I meant to mention earlier, uh, the stones. So stones to have on hand, uh, the hematite, definitely for fire. Citrine is a stone I like to have on hand for air. So if you just want to keep some citrine around, then you've already got it. Georgette keeps a sprig of rosemary on her door, very smart. Uh, so for water, easy things. Apple, very good for water. Cucumber, I had a cucumber in the fridge and I forgot to bring it out. Um, cucumber is good for bringing water to the party. Uh, chamomile, um, chamomile tea is uh, ubiquitous. Uh, if you got happen to have a, 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 a chamomile tea bag and you want a little extra chamomile for some herbal work, you can just break them in that tea bag too. Um, cardamom. Let's see, cardamom, also associated with the goddess Venus, great in coffee, brings a little spice to the situation, very sexy when it comes to water work. Uh, let's see, grape, like we mentioned before, um, lemon balm, uh, it's also good in, you know, it's in tea, it's in the mint family, roses, I have some rose petals for my work tonight. Whenever I give a rose to my goddess um, Aphrodite, as it dries, I pluck off the petals and continue to leave them on her altar to charge, but then they're dried and I use them in magic later. Um, eucalyptus, I'm gonna use some of that tonight. Not the kind of thing that you typically find to cook, obviously because you don't cook with it, but it tends to be all over in decorative items. Um, it's used a lot in uh, respiratory things, and I thought if I was gonna bring water to the table, and considering we have a respiratory illness on the loose, I thought I'd bring some eucalyptus to the party. Strawberry, they're growing like crazy right now. Strawberry's great for water. Also, this um, seasoning called thyme leaf. Thyme is delicious. It also happens to have a component in it called uh, Thimerazole, I think something, or thyme, that's not the right word. There's an ingredient to it, which when you add it to um, chicken soups and things like that can actually help with respiratory illnesses, go to figure. Um, stones that are great to, uh, with water, and there's so many, but tent ones to, to kind of keep around. Um, uh, amethyst is a good one. 
moonstone always have to have moonstone around um, but also blue calcite and I'm gonna be using a little blue calcite tonight because it's a really great one for calming the nerves and my nerves need some calm um, so earth earth is so easy um, oh I should mention also for water lemons definitely great on your water lemon 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 okay other things that are great around the yard I went out back just chop this ivy for earth thymol thank you Georgette it's thymol that's in time that's really great for respiratory stuff but ivy great for earth pine I don't happen to have a pine tree around but pine, gosh they're everywhere get you some pine honeysuckle when it's blooming can be pulled right off the the back fence usually at my house I planted a juniper plant in my yard, but this is one of those things that's in almost every parking lot as a ground cover. Juniper is really great for the earth. And oak, oak trees everywhere. I collect and keep in my stash oak um, and, uh, acorns. That's a great, um, it's a great seed. <laughs> Thanks, Jan, I'm gonna need me some pine. I like some long leaf pine every now and then <laughs> to go in things. All right, um, stones, good things for earth would be emerald, smoky quartz, black tourmaline. I like green adventuring um, for the earth also. Hi, Marla. Thanks for joining. So those are just some things in the backyard. But really, oh, and here's another one. Associated with Libra, dandelions. I found this dandelion. Oop, I cut this dandelion for my grass earlier. But it, um... It's already started to close a little bit, but easy. So if you just had clover and dandelion, you'd have some air energy for what you're using. All right, so those are just some general ideas about stuff around the house. Other things, of course, you know, for the earth altar, it's just sea salt. Anytime you need earth, grounding, purifying. Another way to get a little Venus energy if you wanted it is vanilla. Remember, vanilla extract is basically... It's an alcohol extract of vanilla. It's like a tincture. So you can um, use a little touch of vanilla if ever you need to add a little Venus energy to something. Um, allspice is really great, like I said, for fire, as is some red pepper you should, if you need to protect um, yourself. A lot of the old um, hoodoo recipes especially will be using uh, red pepper to as a protector. Um, all right, another thing, peppercorns excellent i use a lot of peppercorn um you know because the peppercorns are easy to add to things like mojo hands and whatnot and you can put them in particular number combinations i think tend to think of that as another protector also other things that come in um seeds and make it easy things like coriander i'm pretty sure coriander has an air association but i may have to double check that so yeah awesome things just around the kitchen so to my to my spell, I'm going to do tonight, um, I'm gonna purposefully choose to use just common things. I mean, I've got a whole stash of impressively witchy things, but um, I'm gonna just go for the simple ones tonight. So, oh good, Kelly Joe's used chili oil for fire charging and it's a good thing. Anything with capsaicin in it that's hot and spicy, there's your fire. Go for it. But don't touch your eyes afterwards. Careful with that. Okay, so my poppet. Um, I like to treat this person in the five bodies of my self. Uh, you know, clear, you know, obviously this is a symbol. This is um sympathetic magic. It's gonna represent me and what I want to bring to me. I'm gonna make it in sympathy with me. So if I want to to think like what do I want my mind to be like? What do I want to do to clarify my thoughts? So I'm going to take some of the things that I've chosen, so one of my, some of my nine things, and I'm going to put that in the head part, and I'm going to just stuff it in there. So um, some of the things that are associated with air that I've got on my list would be the, um, or with, I should say, with um, Libra specifically, so that I can get a balance to my thoughts. I need balance in my thoughts right now. Dandelion and basil, and those happen to be around, so I'm going to take my dandelion and this is where it gets a little rude jamming it through the crotch of this thing but it's all right let's see I'm gonna put that dandelion in there first of all first I'm gonna wake it up 
I always like to, to blow my breath. It's kind of like a resuscitation of the plant. And tap it three times. Dandelion, awake, awaken to your powers of Libra and of balance in my thinking. I'm going to put it all in the end here. Just jam it into the head part. I've also got some dandelion root up on there. We could also um, put a little root in there if I wanted. Do I want to do that? Maybe I'll do that. I'm also going to put um, uh, a bit of the basil. Like This is a freeze-dried basil. Doesn't take much. Awaken basil. Oop. Awaken basil to your Libra thoughtfulness. Bring balance. Okay. Um, I'm also I'm gonna put this in my solar plexus or the belly of this little guy. Um, I found a hematite charm from jewelry that broke one time. I keep all that kind of stuff in my cupboard back here. And so I was looking for something hematite. And I, you know how when these sort of bracelets break and the beads go everywhere, I'll keep those. In this case, it was a necklace. And it happens to be in the shape of an anchor. And I thought, oh, I really need my protection to be and my fieriness. I, I need it to be more grounded like an anchor in this emotional sea that I feel like I'm drowning in. So I've got a hematite anchor. So I awaken this hematite, its powers of fire and Mars and courage and protection. I'd ask you to be my, my guiding anchor. So I'm gonna put that in there. Not my guiding anchor, my, my anchor in the storm. How about that? I'm gonna add rosemary for the fieriness but also for protection. I feel like I need some protection during this time. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to break this little branch in half. And I'm going to slide one down each arm. Kind of like an embrace, a protected embrace. So let's see. Let's see if I can get that in there. Work it into his arms. It's going to give him a little stiffness. He, she, me. Remembering this is me. All right, so I got some rosemary in the arms. It's harder to get things in the arms than I thought. Other things, of course, um, rose petals are associated with water and the goddess Venus. And honestly, feeling the love right now is pretty darn important. So I'm going to add into the heart space these rose petals that I've, uh, like I said, they've been on my altar for Venus, but I'm just going to stuff a number of them in there. I'll stuff all of them in there so that my little poppet's kind of fat and fluffy. Okay, so there goes Rose. I'm also going to put um, that blue lace. Well, do I want blue lace or do I want kyanite? Kyanite's another great stone to have around because it's um, a balancer for all the whole chakra system. It just brings balance to everything. Do the little ping and I think the kyanite gets it tonight. Kyanite, I'm going to just put that right along where my spine would be in my in my poppet. Just right along the spine. Then I'm going to add a little eucalyptus to where the lungs would be. It's kind of all just in the body cavity of this thing. My eucalyptus, awaken. Awaken eucalyptus to your powers of water and of respiratory health and of emotional aid. Haha, <laughs> handy asame for poking things around. And I direct my will into you, puppet. Okay. 
I'm going to add an acorn for earth and oak so that all this fiery um, action and all this Libra air uh, and mental processes help me to create something real from this little nugget of earth. Um, yeah, I agree, Georgia. The kyanite like a spiritual rod. I love kyanite. It keeps the whole chakra system balanced. So I'm going to add this acorn to where the root chakra would be. Yes, I do mean it's a little booty. I'm going to add that in there. All right. Now, one last thing. This is a stick from my tulip poplar tree out back. I call him guardian tree. Um, guardian tree is my plant priest. He's an enormous tulip poplar and I have my outdoor shrine at the base. And um, guardian tree keeps me rooted and, um, and grounded where I need to be. It also is in my home and it becomes my sacred place in my home. So I thought that it, I would ask guardian trees help in the situation and he's gonna give me some legs. The legs that want to just stay home and grounded and rooted here in this space. So I'm gonna cut a bit the length of the legs. I will often use cinnamon in the legs as a fiery ally, oops, as a fiery ally to help get me moving. But in this case, I need something to help keep me still. So guardian tree, tulip poplar is gonna help me with that. All right, so I'm gonna slide that in the legs to help me find my place here happily. All right, there's one last thing. Anytime you do a poppet or something that is meant to um, bring its energies to a person, um, I'm going to um, add a tag lock. A tag lock is a part of yourself. It needs to have your DNA in it. A tag lock can be a, a bit of hair, it can be a toenail, it can be a bit of spit, especially if you wipe from the inner part of your cheek. Um, I do think the DNA is important and it needs to be from that person. If you don't have that, you could potentially use a scrap of clothes that have been worn near the person. Theoretically, there would be a bit of um, their DNA on that or a bit of their essence or something that represents you. And in this case, I'm going to use a bit of my hair. So, here we go. Ta -da. Tagged to me. Puppet, you represent me in my will and my thoughts in balance with earth and air now. So now that you've got all that stuff, that's nine things, in the poppet. Do, do, do. You sew it up. And so I'm just going to do a little sewing while we talk. Y'all are welcome to um, ask me any questions while we do this before we get to the, the working itself. How y'all doing? Anybody have any questions for me you'd like to ask about what we've done so far? While I sew him up, sew her up, so up my britches here. Uh oh. My string's tangled. Uh oh. This may not go so well. If my string is tangled. I think I'm going to have a problem <laughs> closing this at this point. Let's see. Can make it work. I don't know about y'all, but this has been a challenging time. Oh, where will the papa go? How long will you keep her around? Good questions. Well, I intend, well, first of all, I'm going to show you guys the rest of the work, and as soon as I get it tied up, and it's going to involve a little candle work so I can demonstrate that also. Aha, I got it. Got it. Um, so I'm going to keep her at least for this moon cycle until the moon, um, dark. until the moon is, uh, dark again. I'll keep that going probably. 
because it's so specific and then I may keep it around um, in just you know in a safe place until next time when the when the uh, Sun is in Aries and the moon is in Libra Could certainly do that let's see I've had uh, some yarn mishap we may have to or I mean embroidery thread mishap this may have to be this may have to be fixed later we'll just proceed without but I'm just gonna close it up as best I can I've got some pins I can use too if I need to yeah I think I'm gonna do that for now because this is proving difficult to do while under the gun I'm going to use a, uh, just some pins to keep it from leaking out at the moment and then I can fix it later when I've got some time Okay, now some of the things I can do with my poppet for now. Okay, never mind the pinned crotch. Uh, release the cleanse elements you try the poppet. Got it. Good idea, Kelly Jim. All right, so <clears throat> the decommissioning. Well, what I like to do if I want to reclaim the items in any poppet, which I don't normally, um, is I would decommission them by opening it and thanking each for its service and then um, releasing each one as I deconstruct it then I would destroy the parts that I could like burning the felt or I would um, bury it in this case um, my guardian tree around the roots of my guardian tree receives much of what I would like to bury to give um, slowly back to the earth and since this is all about me wanting to be grounded here at home to retire this one and since there's nothing in there that I couldn't give back to the earth I might just take the whole thing out and it's somewhere in my backyard um, uh, when I'm done with it bury it in the yard and then allow possibly even that acorn to then actually grow in the earth as what I would like it to be eventually so um, depends I tend to if I'm going to bury something I tend to like to use only 100% natural materials and I'm not real sure about this felt so um, I might not do that for that one but between burying things and releasing them in fire after I've decommissioned it to to destroy it entirely or sometimes I'll keep it for later and use it again later all right so I'm gonna do a little bit of symbol magic here if you have a sigil for um, for any particular thing you're working on definitely add that to a poppet if you like but in this case I'm just going to appear on the head part I'm gonna draw the symbol for Libra and alchemical air Ooh, well sort of on the head and then on the other side where the solar plexus would be I'm gonna put the symbol for Aries and elemental fire on the other side I'm gonna name this let's see I'm gonna name this for me I always have to look at it. It's a fine rune that means heron. And I'm going to bring balance to myself. Hopefully I'm going to put it on my, my hands, I think. I want to bring some balance into my work. So that's where I'm going to add the um, alchemical symbols of earth and water. For me. That's just me coming up with something that means meaningful to me all right so now for the rest of the working I've begun I'm gonna uh, include a little candle work for this so I happen to have in my stash and so to answer the question original question do you buy things individually or do you just have it on hand I like to keep candles in all the colors um, just because I never know what I'm gonna want to do what I'm gonna want to do it and I keep um, rainbow colors around it usually will cover what I need silver and gold also brown gray that would cover it all so into this with my all like I had said earlier I have put some inscriptions Libra and air and um, fire and Aries on this one but you can't really see it can you so here's a trick tip this down a bit okay first of all I'm going to anoint the candle we're going to begin with the fire one this is my fire oil. So, 
I'm going to anoint the candle. Since I'm trying to bring these fires to myself, I turn it around facing me and I anoint the candle towards me. I'm going to get it kind of oily here. Then I'm going to put some herbs of fire on there, which happen to be dark. So remember my fiery sun blend. It has cinnamon, ginger, allspice, clove, and nutmeg in it. Let's see. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit over the inscriptions on a little plate here so that it um, catches it. And then I'm going to grind it in with my finger. This is dressing a candle 101. It's sticking to the oil also. All right. Now, can you see it? Air and Aries. I mean, fire and Aries. Okay, so now the same over here with my air candle. Only this time, I'm going to add. Um, well, let's see, I didn't crush up my basil. Let's see if I can make this happen. So my air oil. Again, I'm trying to bring that mental balance to myself. Come to me, powers of mental clarity. All right, let's see. Actually, let's, let's try this time. See what I can get to stick in there. Normally a powder is the best idea, and this is a little, a little herby. Oh, that's not working as good as I want. I can get it to stick a little bit. Well, I've got a better idea. Hold on. The air incense I've had earlier. Oop, there we go. All right, that's better. Okay. Air and Libra. All right. Other tricks. I'm going to set these up in their candle holders to represent the position of the sun and the moon. Clean some things up here. If the candle won't fit in the candle holder very snugly, a little piece of aluminum foil around the base of the candle. Okay, so this represents where the moon is right now. And this represents where the sun is right now. Okay. Let's clean up a little bit. All right, so this is my altar pattern. I made it myself. It's the charging plate. The magical char hot plate, they say. So, here's how I'm going to do it. I'll trim my wicks to a quarter inch so they don't get too hot. All right. Let's see. Powers of the sun in Aries and of the great God. Awaken and bring your courage and strength, your motivation into my workings. Powers of the moon in Libra, of emotional powers. The great goddess work through this, work through this poppet, work your magic into me for emotional, 
stability and balance. Help my thoughts to be productive, even if I'm in isolation and I seek it and I want to be in company of others. Help me to find balance in my work. And this is my altar tool of earth, the pentacle is. And so I, I lay this poppet upon it to represent that this is the earth. This is us here in the middle, the physical world. And this is how I'm going to charge and dedicate this to be a representative of me. It's me. And I would like to, to know this balance between thought and action in a grounded way that helps to bring peace and serenity to my to my heart and to my physical self awaken into life awaken awaken into life I'm going to do a little extra with my incense. Since I especially want a little more air energy in all of this. Consecrate with air and call in all those powers of air. I consecrate with fire, the lighting. And then I'd like to do a special feeding of the poppet. This is some peace water made previously in one of our esbats. Peace water is a pretty complicated process. Can't get into that tonight, but it's a water, it's made out of many waters and it helps to bring peace to the heart. So I'm going to draw up and then I'm going to feed the heart and each of the other chakras this peace water. May you know peace. May I know peace. And then one in each hand. May, may the works of my hands be peaceful. And may my where I walk with these feet also no peace. So that's water. And it's on my altar pattern. So there's earth. All right, I'm trying not to light myself on fire here. Because this is an Esbat. And it's a kind of charge and a reminder. <laughs> That's right, DJ. Well, you know me, I like to smoke a room up here with some incense. Might add a little more even. The remainders of the, um, the fire and the air incense on my plate from my candle charging, no waste anything, right? I'm gonna put it on my charcoal now, let it burn. I'm gonna read the charge of the goddess. It's kind of, for me, this builds energy, but it also opens myself to divinity. Listen to the words of the great mother, who was of old also called Artemis, Astarte, Diana, Melusine, Aphrodite, Caridwen, Dana, Aaronrod, Isis, Breed, and by many other names. Whenever, whenever you have need of anything, once in a month it better it be when the moon is full, then you shall assemble in some secret place and adore the spirit of me who am queen of all witcheries. There shall you assemble, you who are fain to learn all sorcery. 
yet have not yet won its deepest secrets. To these will I teach things that are yet unknown. And you shall be free from slavery. And as a sign that you are really free, you shall be naked in your rights. And you shall dance, sing, feast, make music and love all in my praise. For mine is the ecstasy of the spirit. And mine also is joy on earth. For my law is love unto all beings. Keep pure your highest ideal. Strive ever towards it. Let not stop you or turn you aside. For mine is the secret door which opens upon the land of youth. And mine is the cup of the wine of life. And the cauldron of Caridwin which is the holy grail of immortality. I am the gracious goddess who gives the gift of joy unto the heart. Upon earth I give the knowledge of the Spirit Eternal, and upon death I give peace and freedom and reunion with those who have gone before. Nor do I demand sacrifice, for behold, I am the mother of all living, and my love is poured out upon the earth. Hear you the words of the star goddess, she in the dust of whose feet are the hosts of heaven, whose body encircles the universe. I, who am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon among the stars and the mysteries of the waters and the heart's desire, call unto thy soul. Arise and come unto me. I am the soul of nature who gives life to the universe. From me all things proceed, and unto me must all things return. And before my face, beloved of gods and mortals, your inmost divine self shall be enfolded in the rapture of infinite joy. Let my worship be within the heart that rejoices, for behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. And therefore, let there be beauty and strength, power and compassion, honor and humility, mirth and reverence within you. And you who think to seek for me, no, your seeking and yearning shall avail you not unless you know this mystery, that if that which you seek you find not within yourself, you will never find it without. For behold, I have been with you from the beginning, and I am that which is attained at the end of desire. Blessed be. And now I push all the power and the passion that's been aroused within me through the reminder of my charge into my wee puppet. And I ask that that mission and my highest ideals, may, may I never turn aside from them. May I have the, the fires and the inspiration to accomplish those goals. Well, I'm honored. Spanish Moss, that you're here. I see that you're watching and I am grateful for your presence. One last thing before we go, because it isn't an bad until there's been the blessing of the cup and the giving of offerings. So I'm going to do that as a final. The chalice and a wee plate of cookies. Chocolate, oatmeal, peanut butter, no bake cookies because that's how you know the goddess loves you, is chocolate. Okay. The cup represents the goddess, the womb of the goddess, filled with red wine. The athame represents the god, the phallus of the god. And as the athame is to the god, and the cup is to the goddess, together they are conjoined in blessedness. Blessed be. The cup is blessed. And I bless these cookies as a representation of how the elements of earth and 
air and fire and water come together, the many hands that work hard and minds who plan, the waters of rain, and the fires of the sun that created the materials needed to nourish. And I see these cookies as a representation of the promise that we will be cared for here in this middle world. Blessed be. And I begin by giving my um, offerings. One to the God, one to the goddess, one to the ancestors. There's one for the God, and one for the goddess, and one for my ancestors over on my ancestor altar. And one for me, because here on the dark side, we have cookies. Mm. We are all gods and goddesses. May we never thirst. And may we never hunger. Mm. And may we never be forced to be bored and sober in some sort of stiff, patriarchal, invasive orthodoxy where they don't know how to have a good time. Don't want to talk with a mouthful, but it basically concludes everything I had to say. I have no idea what time it is. If anyone has any last questions you'd like to ask me, I would love to answer them. Feel free to just pop it into the comments. I'm very grateful for you all for attending and watching my little video and spending the full moon with me. So mote that be, Jenny. Thank you all for being here. This has been a lot of fun. Um, on this full moon night, I tend to, in all of my our circles, we have a time called prayers and thanksgiving, where after the main work is done and after we're enjoying the chalice and a little feast and a little more levity among us, we take our turns. And if there's some gratitude to speak, we, we speak it, we claim it. And if there's some need we visualize that need. I have a friend who's experienced a loss in her family from COVID-19, and I know that she's suffering. And I know that they are in memorial here soon to honor his life. And so I honor a young man now named Connor. He was 13 when he died of COVID-19. And I wish him peace on the journey and love in the interim and I hold my friend Gannon in the light of love as she suffers her loss may she know the peace and comfort of friends as she transitions through her grief I hold them all in the light of love blessed be I hold all the people who have been suffering from this terrible disease and all of our medical personnel and all the rest who are working so hard to keep the rest of us safe. I see the fires of Aries and their courage and bravery emboldened again and energized as needed. And I see the, the thoughtfulness and the balanced wisdom of Libra in the minds of all those who are planning and leading because God knows we need some wisdom up in there. May there be wise guidance for us. Another thing that's interesting about the Aries sun and the Libra moon times is in the tarot, Aries card is the emperor. It is the wise leader. The wise leader who does the right thing for his people He's, he's loved, he's beloved because he sacrifices himself um, for the needs of the many. And Libra is about justice. 
and balance and doing the right thing. It really couldn't we use a lot more of that right now, especially in our leadership. May they know wisdom. So mode that be. Mm. Wow. So I hope I answered the question earlier, you know, about what do I do with the poppet now? So this poppet, it's like it's been ensouled with me. Whatever I do to this poppet, I do to myself. And it is now a living, magical being, and it needs to be fed. So I'm going to leave this poppet on my altar for at least the next two weeks as the moon wanes back down to dark. I'm going to leave it on my <clears throat> my altar pattern. Funny that um, Spanish moss popped in after I'd already said this, but this is my magical hot plate. Got that bit of wisdom from Spanish moss. So I'm going to leave it on my magical hot plate to keep charging. I'll likely let these candles burn tonight under my guidance while I continue to feed it that, that wish and prayer. I'll probably spend some time in my room, my altar room tonight working on things related to witchcraft and my book. So I'll just attend to it. And then at the end of that time, I will probably um, commit the the natural ingredients on the inside um, buried underneath my guardian tree out by my outdoor shrine. I don't think I'm going to put this felt there. I'm not real sure. I don't think it's a natural. I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. And I don't like to put um, synthetic materials in the earth. So, oh, Georgette says she's seeing a swan mother swimming in a lake as she cradles her her baby swans. Oh, for your friend and her son. Yeah, her nephew actually. Yes. So, thank you everyone. If you, um, I hate to get to the business of the thing, but um, I've been doing these videos as a means to be connected and to continue to outreach to our community, but also to, um, to try to raise some funds for the store. As an update, I have applied for the uh, disaster relief loans um, and also the payroll um, protection loans that are available now from the CARES Act. My understanding is that it's uh, two to three weeks before you even hear back from all of that. Meanwhile, payroll is being paid. Just yesterday I had to um, to go into the store even though we've been closed and there've been, you know, some, some back of house work done, but I've just made a choice to be the sort of boss and corporate president um, that puts her actions where her values lie and I've chosen to to try to pay a baseline salary to everyone on my staff, regardless of what hours were spent. Um, there was some sick time um, from someone on our staff who was sick, and I just chose to to try to pay everyone um, what I could now, uh, ba you know, regardless of whether they were at work or not. Um, so hopefully, when the the payroll protection loans come in, which are forgivable loans, I can bring everybody up to what their full um, pay would have been because we're likely going to be closed at some capacity through at least April 30th, maybe beyond. We're going to do the responsible thing um, because honestly, we're all in this together. And um, it's um, I'm a terrible retailer. I just don't think that the selling and the buying of stuff at this moment is where we need to be um, focusing our energies. So anyway, if you can donate via PayPal. To orders at thesojo.com. I would certainly appreciate your donation. I am very grateful to everyone who's um, sent, sent us a little something. It did go right into that payroll. You can ask anybody on, anybody on my staff. And um, we're very grateful to everyone who has bought a t-shirt or some other swag to show your Sojo pride through the teespring.com slash the Sojourner Tees. And we're very grateful to everyone who's been able to send us a little donation. Like I said before, if you live anywhere near Greenville, that donation will go on an in-store credit account for you so that that deposit is there for um, you to spend next time you're in the store. If you don't want me to do that because you live too far away, you can just put that in a note and say, yeah, don't bother, which I'm very grateful. Uh, for example, to Kelly Jo, I know she's watching, who gave us a, a very generous donation, and she's on the West Coast. So 
much love to all of you who are just there to support your brothers and sisters in the craft. We appreciate that. It has been brilliant. Happy full moon. And as the moon peaks at 10.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you've got some time to go out and try to grab a peek. One last bit of little something that I like to do, especially when I'm alone, take you a chalice outside with a little bit of something. Red wine if you like to do that. And if you can see the moon where you are, it's a little overcast tonight, but if you can see the moon, go out in your backyard when she's high in the sky and tilt your glass just around just so, so that your, your wine becomes a mirror and get it where you can actually see the moon reflected in your glass. And then say, say this, gracious lady moon, ever in my sight, kindly grant this boon I ask of thee tonight. A boon is a favor. And then ask for what your heart desires. See that the goddess indwells within the, the wine or whatever you're drinking. And then take a good old drink and know that what you seek will come to you to seek within. Thank you everyone for attending this uh, Full Moon as Bat edition of the Witch on Fireside Chats. I'm definitely feeling very Witch on Fireside here. Thank you for your um, support and we'll see you again on Friday, Friday night. Send me questions and I'll try to answer them or even a demo. I'll do a demo for you. Thank you very much everyone. Blessed be.